there, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA soccer show. Paul is unfortunately unavailable due to the flooding in his Summerfelt uh, stables, and joining me shortly from his Fulham studio in the UK will be our regular correspondent, Stevie Braham. We will be going through the UK Europa League last night, the Europa Conference League next weekend, and unfortunately, it's the last week of the major leagues in Italy and Spain. Steve, good morning. Morning, Budge. What do you think of the final last night? Well, it was. Uh, they should have just gone straight to penalties. Uh, <laughs> extra time was a complete uh, waste. Of, I mean, it was. I think the game will be remembered probably for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I mean, the the behaviour of the of the benches was just. I'm not. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it yeah. for a long time. On the touchline, uh, you know how how Michael Oliver and Anthony Taylor managed to keep uh, keep a lid on it, and something like 13 players booked. Uh, you know, it was just uh, ridiculous. But uh, look, in the end, Sevilla. I, I think the right, the best team won yeah. from about half an hour or so onwards. They they they, they were the better team. Roma uh, seemed to be quite happy with their one goal lead, and uh, they didn't really look like uh, troubling uh, the score as much after um, Sevilla equalised. So yeah, yeah, but I mean, the record they have seven. They've won that competition seven yeah, times. Really it's quite uh, uh, incredible. Yeah, I think when Mourinho sits back, reflects, to me, when they were 1-0 up, Sevilla were there for the taking. You, you remember the Man United games against Sevilla at Old Trafford? United should have scored four in the first half because they are weak at the back. But once they start dictating play, you're always going to be under pressure, especially the Spanish sides. And I agree. I'm just glad that uh, the VAR got the penalty decision right. It cost me a couple of hundred rand because I went both teams to score on over two and a half goals. So I was funking for the penalty. But the correct decision was made. And the other thing that was strange for me is... He put two fullbacks on to take penalties. That just didn't make sense, Steve. I don't know if you you followed that up, if yeah, they've written I mean, anything about it. Yeah, well, I mean, whether or not you know he was running out of players, there was quite a few players were hobbling around and, and went off, and uh, a number of their main penalty takers were not on the pitch yeah. when it came to it. So, uh, and they really didn't look very comfortable uh, in that in that shootout and, and deservedly lost it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, like, you know, and then the other thing I think that just sort of whether you saw it or not at the end, uh, he gave his medal away no, to I a didn't young see. boy. Basically, said he he doesn't want the silver medals. It's, uh, it's all a bit, uh, yeah, you know, a bit too bit too much showmanship for me. And now they're saying that uh, he could be off to PSG. Yeah, so, I guarantee uh, he's going to go. Uh, there's no doubt about that. If they'd have got through that, he would have stayed because it's Champions League football. But I've watched him the last few weeks, Steve, and he's actually ruined that team. They've got some nice players, but he put all his eggs in one basket at Man United when we won the Europa League a few years ago. He got lucky when Ajax never turned up, but Sevilla was always going to be a difficult ask. And in the end, I think, as you said, they deserve to win. Next week, Wednesday, Steve, massive game for yeah. West Ham fans. How do you see them going against Fiorentina? Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think it's not, it's, this is one of these games. It's, it could go either way. Yeah. I mean, they've had a good record in, in the conference this year. Fiorentina have got through. I mean, they haven't set the world alight in uh, Serie A this year, but they're obviously sort of comfortable uh, in mid-table. I think that so West Ham will have to be on their game. I think they're quite capable of winning and it should, as a one-off game. Uh, it should be quite interesting. What is a shame is it's being played in a very small stadium. You know, capacity of twenty thousand. Okay. And uh, I know number. Of, I know one or two West Ham fans got no chance getting tickets. They've only been allocated five thousand mm. official tickets. So oh, it doesn't uh, make sense, does it? Just, for their first, yeah, their first Wembley fight. Uh, their first European, European. finals in seventy six, and basically the majority of their fans can't uh, can't get to see it. Yeah, I just wonder, it just amazes me how they make these decisions. It should be a minimum capacity of 40,000. Then you can even, if you say with the dignitaries, you give 15,000 each, and uh, then at least it makes it fair for the local fans or the loyal fans. But anyway, let's just hope it's a good game, Steve. I hope West Ham yeah. win it, but somehow, but a funny feeling it'll be Fiorentina, even though they have scraped through in the last two rounds. Steve, on to the weekend, and uh, the first FA Cup Manchester final. How do you see it going? Yes. Look, I mean, on paper and the way that the teams have been playing, 
recently. You've you, you know you've got a fancy City, but you know United aren't going to want to roll over and let City win that uh, and, and and be on for the treble because yeah. I think they're quite protective of what they did in '99. <laughs> uh, and I think that you know, I, you know anything could happen. Really, I mean, like he rested a number of his key players, Pep. Uh, the other day, which he has done for a couple of games. Uh, this is a big game because obviously it's the stepping stone to uh, the big one the following weekend and the yeah. treble. I think it'll be a good game. I mean, they, you know, they're honours. I say honours even. Obviously, City won very easily in the in, in the game at the Etihad, but the United surprised them in the game at uh, Old Trafford. Yeah. I think I think this could, I think this could be a really good game, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I just hope City don't score early, Steve. That's my only concern as United, man. Then they can keep the ball and so on. I'm glad Martial's not available because the most frustrating United player I've ever seen. You know, when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. My only concern with United is against the top 10 teams, obviously Fulham downwards and United ran third. The only team they beat was Fulham and Ganaccio scored in the last minute. Other than that, we drew with Spurs and we could have got beat there. 2 0 up at half time, ended up being 2 2. The other seven teams all beat United. You know, I just couldn't believe it when I saw that away record, as good as it is at home. And that's my concern, Steve. United score, I mean, a City score first. You know, I don't know, but uh, I'm going to have a couple of bets, Steve. I saw the betting on any time goal scorers. I just couldn't believe Casemiro was 14 to 1. If ever there's somebody that may sneak and do something. Yeah. And I can't believe, uh, you know, but you never know who's going to play. And I like Rodri to score at 8 to 1 too. That would be my two. If I was going to have yeah. interest in the game, how would you see? I mean, he's, he, he's rested Grealish to the last couple of games. So yeah. he's obviously, you know, going to be playing. Look, I think we all hope it's a close game. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be good for football. We don't want uh, something one sided. Yeah. You, know, you want these games. Uh, especially a big derby, you, you, you know. It's obviously, City fans are going to be looking you know, for a big win, but you know, I think the public wants a, a, a close game, a, a few goals, and a bit of excitement. Yeah, no doubt. Let's hope we get it. There'd be nothing worse. Was it the uh, was it City beat Stoke a few years ago? They hammered them, and then they hammered. Was it Watford was in the Cup yeah, final, yeah, six nil or? Maybe. Yeah, they beat Watford six nil. So uh, yeah, you don't you want know, that. I think that was uh, no. Anyway, Steve, uh, it's the last weekend in Spain and in Italy, so we're going to go through the Spanish fixtures first. They are all on Sunday, so just bear that in mind where the Italians yes, have staggered yeah. their fixtures, obviously to help Fiorentina in their Wednesday yeah. night Europa League Cup final. So we'll get the betting up now, and uh, the good thing about it, Steve, is there's everything, a lot, lot up to play as far as the Europa League and the Europa League yeah. conference place goes and the relegation. You know, oh, it's no, actually, it's uh, the there. but uh, some of the prices I just can't believe. Steve, we'll go through them top to bottom. Yeah. Mallorca, Rayo, Vallecano. How do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, Mallorca haven't really got anything to play for particularly. Yeah. Uh, I think they'd probably be favourites at home, but Rayo Vallecano needs something. So I think they'll be a close game. I, I think the home, New York are just favourites, but yeah. uh, I don't think there'd be much in it. Yeah, you know, I watched Rayo Vallecano. They won the other day. Yeah, in and out, they beat Villarreal. Just away from home, I worry about them. Of the two teams, Mallorca, but, you know, the last game of the season, you just never know. But one thing there yeah. will be, will be goals. Steve, I've watched Osasuna a couple of times. If they win this, they finish seventh. I was going to make them my best bet. I watched Girona, well-organised team, but they've got to go for it as well. It's seventh against ninth. I fancy Osasuna. Who do you go? Who are you going for? Yeah, I think so. I think you know, of the, of the teams who are going for a Europa Conference place, they're the only ones who it's really in their own hands. Yeah, and I think that they would. Uh, they, they haven't had a bad season. I think that they they will start as favourites. Obviously, Girona have got something to play for. If the, if they cancel each other out, then someone else behind them could, could uh, nip in. So yeah. I think that's going to be a really good game, but I fancy Osasuna. Yeah, me too. Yeah, they got beaten uh, the Spanish Cup by Real Madrid, played well. Yeah. And I think of their 22-man squad, 13 are local boys, so uh, well done to them. Steve, I cannot believe Real Madrid, they're 11, just under 11 to 10. They'll obviously yeah. start shorter. Everyone's got this notion that Athletic Bilbao have to win to get in the top eight. Real Madrid have won their last four at home. It could be Benzema's last game and a few others. I yeah. cannot believe this price, Steve. I think they're absolute yeah. certainties. 
What do yeah, you think? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think so. Look, I mean, uh, Bill, uh, Atletico uh, Club Bilbao have had opportunities in the last few weeks yeah. to, to nail down that seventh spot. They've lost four of their last five. Yeah. And uh, as you say, Real Madrid, they're not going to want to lose at home and let uh, uh, their rivals, Atletico, uh, leak from them. Correct. So I, I think I think they're going to start as, as big favourites. And I was very surprised they're not odds on at home. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't think people think that they're going to be on the beach. I think that they've still got something to play for. Uh, they're at home in front of a big crowd and I think that they'll win. Yeah, totally agree. See, the betting has changed uh, overnight purely because Sevilla won yeah. the Europa League. So it's 8 to 10 Real Sociedad this morning. That's got to be a good bet, surely? Yeah, look, first of all, Real Sociedad have had a fantastic season yeah. and they've uh, guaranteed themselves uh, Champions League football in fourth place. Uh, Sevilla, <laughs> had they have lost last night, then... Yeah, they, 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 you know, they, they would have had an outside chance of getting into Europa Conference place, but they don't need it now. Yeah. And all, in, in spite of their, um, you know, their, their, deep, their obviously decent form in the league, they they haven't won in three. And I think that uh, you know, I'd, I'd be very surprised if they get anything at all. So yeah. I think the betting is about right. Yeah, eight to ten good things. The next game, the big game, Villarreal against Atletico. Obviously, Atletico have one eye on the Real Madrid game. I backed them last week. I backed Villarreal last week, Steve. They were woeful against Real Vallecano. Everything to play for, Champions League. They were great at the back for years. They were woeful last week. And against Atletico Madrid team, who have struggled away from home, strangely, I've got to go with Atletico Madrid. Do you agree? Well, look, listen, I mean, let's go Madrid. Uh, are, are guaranteed their Champions League place. They'd love to try and catch uh, their rivals, Real, and finish in second place. Uh, you know, the only thing is, obviously, they are at home. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're not going to want to slip up. I, 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 think, I think they could probably cancel each other out. I can't see, I can't make a case of Atletico Madrid um, winning easily there. I think mm. it'll be uh, closer. But, uh, as you say, you know, they, they didn't play very well last week. Yeah. On to the second page where we've got Salta Vigo, who are in serious trouble, hosting yeah. the champions Barcelona. Couldn't believe Barcelona last week, the price they were. But away from home, Steve, they've been a bit suspect. Can Salta Vigo cause an upset? Well, look, the, the, the danger for them is obviously uh, they're only one place off the bottom. And, if, and, yeah. and I think that uh, they are in trouble. They've lost four of their last five. Barcelona, uh, you know, have won the league comfortably. Uh, they have lost two of their last three, but they may want to go out on a high. And I think this is uh, probably the, 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 the this is the last team that Celta Vigo want to play, yeah. knowing that they probably have to win to stay up. I, I can't see them doing it somehow. I think uh, Barcelona will be too strong. Yeah, you would think so, especially defensively. Barcelona, they're going for the record, so many clean sheets, so difficult for Yoga Aspas and Co. I'd love Celta Vigo to stay in, but. Somehow, I think they're in trouble. Elche already relegated against Cadiz, Steve. I've watched Elche lately. They, they beat Atletico Madrid last week. How I, sorry, Athletic Bilbao. How I don't know, but I think they're a decent price to win at home. But how do you see it going? Yeah, it's, it's strange. I mean, obviously, they've, they've, they've shown a little bit of form, unbeaten in their last four, yeah. even though they're effectively 16 points adrift. Um, but Cadiz have to get something. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if Cadiz uh, lose, even though they're sitting in 13th, they could be caught. I, I think Cadiz will probably get the result they need and uh, <clears throat> steer themselves away. But otherwise, you know, they'll be looking over their shoulder at the other results. Yeah, I think fortunately a few of them play each other, so it gives Cadiz a bit of a chance. But it wouldn't surprise me if it ends in a stalemate. Espanol, El Maria, Steve, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, disappointing season for Espanyol. Uh, you know, they're, they're obviously their relegation has been confirmed. Uh, Almeria, I mean, they need a point still, or yeah. two even. I mean, you know, they could be caught. Uh, and so I think, you know, I think they'll, they'll put up a bit of a fight. Again, it's one of these games they could cancel each other out, but uh, Almeria can't afford to lose with the, yeah. only a couple of teams below them. Yeah, I was going to make Espanyol my best value bet of the weekend, Steve. I watched them play Valencia last week. They were the better team for a long time. They conceded an injury time, and that's caused them to get relegated. At home, last game, pressure on Almeria. I've just got a funny feeling that Espanyol will get a result. I don't see them losing. There should be goals, because Espanyol score and concede in every game. But 18-10, uh, I thought it was worth an interest, and uh, I'll have a look at the team that they select before having a bet, but... 
I don't think Almeria will win there. I'd have Espanyol winning a draw. Steve, I can't believe the pricing in the next game. I think they got the betting the wrong way. How do you see Real Batiste going against Valencia? Well, uh, Real Batiste, I mean, you know, they are, you know, they've obviously guaranteed their Europa spot. Uh, they've been strong at home. And, you know, Valencia, Valencia can't afford to lose, though. I mean, they've only lost one of their last five. But, yeah. uh, you know, they could, they could still get caught. Uh, having said that, I think Real Batista are, are going to be favourites. And, uh, you know, as I say, they, they've had a, a, a very good season for them, finishing above teams like, uh, you know, their, their rivals, Sevilla. So I fancy Real Batista to finish strongly and, and win that. Yeah, so do I. I've been all my bets already. And uh, last but not least, a big game, especially at the bottom. Real Valladolid, who've got to get something out of this against a Getafe team who, if they get beat, they could be in trouble. Which way are you going at, Steve? Well, I think, you know, Real, Real Valadid looked like they were gone a couple of weeks ago. They picked yeah. up four points in the last two games, give themselves a chance. But they know they have to win, basically. Uh, anything other than a win and they go down. So, yeah. whereas uh, Getafe, you know, th th I think they only need they only need a point. I, I think Getafe might just get that point. But Real Valadid, you know, they've got to have a go. Yeah. They, they, you know, it, it's win or bust for them. I think it'll be a really good game. But... Uh, I, I just fancy Katafi to, to get that point they need. Yeah, so do I. Real Valladolid beat Barcelona 3-1 in the last home game, so they've obviously got to be confident. But I back Katafi a few times, Steve. They're your old-fashioned Stoke City, well-organised, set-piece material. And of the two teams, I'm all over Katafi. On to Italy, where they've staggered the games, fortunately. The first game kicking yeah. off on uh, Friday, Steve. And I um, fancy yeah. Sassuolo to beat a Fiorentina team who if they don't rotate and play the squad team, I'll be amazed. How do you see it going now? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe they won't uh, rotate. I mean, surely he's not going to risk any of his key players yeah. with, uh, with a European final coming up. Uh, they're completely safe here in team, but they can't, you know, they can't uh, you know, go up or down, as it were. They can go up sort of one place and down a couple, but it doesn't really affect anything. I think Sassuolo had a decent season, obviously, um, not as good as they had done under Roberto De Zerbi, but yeah. uh, I think that they, I think they deserve it to be uh, favourites. They haven't won in the last five, but I think they'll be too strong on, on the night. Yeah, I backed Fiorentina against a Roma team last weekend. <laughs> Mourinho rotated all these players. They came back and won 2 1, and I think Fiorentina will do the same thing. Torino into Milan, Steve. I know into Milan have got a couple of Champions League Cup final next Saturday, but surely they're going to yeah. want to. Get things right. Torino in and out. It's got to be into Milan, surely. You'd think so, but then again, you know, is he going to want to to risk all of his top players? I know yeah. it's a week away, but you know, he may want to rotate a little bit. Uh, Torino have got uh, nothing to play for, really. They can't uh, finish any higher than the, than the position they're in. Yeah. Um, and they had a big win last week against a team that, that needed the points. I, th I would be surprised if Torino hold them. Uh, only because I think that, you know, it, I'd be surprised if Inter play their strongest team. I, I just can't see why he would risk any one of his key sort of four or five players. Yeah. Listen, so they've got a deep squad, you know. You have a look at Lukaku plays up front, Zeko Lukaku. I know, I think you're resting young Argentinian, but, you know, even so, Inter Milan are well organised at the back. And, you know, Turin... Oh, yeah. Milan derbies, uh, but uh, I agree, it's just not one I would have a few rand on. The next game, Steve Criminense, Salernitano, it should be goals aplenty, but which way do you see it going? Well, I mean, the Criminense obviously have uh, long been relegated. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, I think Salernitano, I think, have surprised people. Uh, I watched them uh, in their game at Roma, and they're probably unlucky not to win that. Yeah. Uh, only, only beat lost one of the last five as well I think that uh, they'll go to Cremonese and win I mean obviously look Cremonese have only won four all season they may want to go out on a bit of a high yeah. they've lost their last three I think that uh, Salah and Atala should be too strong uh, goals guaranteed but of the two teams Steve totally agree Salah and Atana for me Steve Empley I watched some beach Juventus the other day great result Lazio sneaked in last week winning 1-0 at Ut Udinese you would think Lazio would want to finish second and go in on a high, but somehow I think just qualifying has maintained their goal. Can Empoli cause an upset? They can do. They're unbeaten in the last five. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, 
they can't really, you know, they're not going down, they're not going much higher than they are. Uh, again, you know, as you say, you never always know how teams are going to play in the last game of the season. Uh, you know, Lazio have done what they needed to do. They've had a very good season. Yeah. I think they've surprised people finishing uh, second. So, uh, again, I, that one could really go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if they possibly cancel each other out. But uh, it should be an entertaining game, as I say. Lazio have, have accomplished what they wanted. You know, they can get caught by Inter, but I'm not sure that Inter will play personally their strongest team. So I think Lazio should probably get the result they need and finish second. Yeah, I agree. Especially when they play, they play earlier into Milan. So Lazio, know if they yeah. can celebrate or not. If they have to go for it, I think they'll get the necessary points. But uh, if they don't, don't be surprised of an upset. Napoli, Steve, I like what they've done. They've given them uh, the time on their time slot on their own so they can get the trophy. They should be too good for relegated Sampdoria, surely? One to four, oh, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, top against bottom. Sam, Sampdoria, you know, in the past, a good team in the past have had a appalling season I mean they've been uh, the whipping boys con you know conceded as many goals as anybody uh, only won three all season I mean Napoli obviously it's going to be one big party isn't it yeah. but I think that they'll do they'll do what they need to do um, it, it's probably farewell to one or to a few of their players yeah. you know I mean the way that uh, they're, they're talking they've already uh, the press have already got all their key players leaving which I think will be a disappointment for, for the fans but uh, you know they, they want to send them off on a high and I think they'll win comfortably yeah also the manager's last game as well so uh, he'll yeah. obviously yeah. want to win Steve I can't believe the, the bet you on the next game AC Milan 8-10 to 10 at home against Verona I know Verona have to get a result but I just can't see it. AC Milan, last game at home, they'll have their full team out. Surely they've got to be too good for Verona. You would think so. I mean, I know that uh, uh, Verona uh, are in a battle at the bottom. We'll, we'll talk about it with Spezia. But uh, Milan, are, you know, they'd like to try and finish third above their, above their city rivals. Yeah. So uh, they've had a disappointing end to the season and as far as uh, their European campaign. And I think they're going to want to go out on a high. Yeah, totally agree. Eight to ten in all my bets. Now, AS Roma, even money, they've got to get a result here to confirm the Europa League status for yeah. next year. And against a Spezia team who, like Verona, are also struggling. Can you expect them to get the necessary win, Steve? Well, I think this is a tough one now for Roma because they've got to, basically, they need to get a result. I mean, yeah. as you said earlier, he's put all his eggs in one basket, Mourinho. They haven't played well in recent weeks. They've let, uh, I mean, they were, you know, on the cusp of a, of a potential Champions League place, but they let that slip. And now, you know, not one in five, yeah. you know, they could miss out on the Europa place. He, he's somehow he's got to write, raise his players up. Uh, in the space of a few days against a team that are fighting against relegation. Yeah. I think if their mindset is right, they can do it. But, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for them having to play after, you know, it's, it's interesting that, that this European final was, was played before the end of the season. Yes. You know, it's unusual for that to happen. Um, you know, they've obviously done it because they wanted not to have on the same week as the other European final. But I don't think it's done Roma any favours. I think they'll do it if, if he can... You know, if, if he's as good as man management skills, can get his players high because they're going to be, they look crestfallen last night and exhausted. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Spezia are going to go there uh, knowing that uh, they've got to get a result. Uh, sorry, the hell it's Verona. Yeah. They've got to get a result. Yeah, I, I just think that they've, they're, it's a Wednesday game. Maybe mean a Thursday game, Steve. You know, I could understand them, but the desire not to let the fans down, could you imagine if they don't get another result? The fans will be going berserk in that, uh, the Olympic Stadium in Rome. But even money, I'm hoping they drift. I think they'll win comfortable, Steve. That's my opinion. Especially I've watched them. They haven't won an eight away from home. And uh, the good thing about it, if they both get beat, which I think they will be, it's not a relegation. They, if it's a tie in Italy, they've changed it. It's now a playoff to see who goes down. Yeah, so, so that's quite interesting. So, uh, so I think uh, I, I agree yeah, with that. Yeah. Well, Spezia had the opportunity last week and they lost at home to Torino 4-0. So yes. uh, they didn't, really didn't do themselves any favours. Yeah, I'm all over AS Roma. Atalanta, Steve, another team that uh, if they win, they can qualify for the Europa League. But AC Monza, who yeah. cost me big time last week, they've only lost one in nine. I don't think it's going to be easy for Atalanta. No, but I think Atalanta know it's in their own hands. Yeah. Um, 
you know they have lost three of their last four yeah. you know when when, it, when they, they were in with the sniff of a of a Champions League spot themselves but I think that I think they know what they need to do and I, I you know they've got Juventus breathing down their neck I think that they'll probably get the result they need to to guarantee that Europa place yeah Lecce versus Bologna well, Lecce have sort of pulled themselves away from trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, they can't. You know, they can't go up, up or down any position. Bologna have had a decent end to the season. Only lost one of the last five. Uh, I think Lecce might just about. They could hold them. I yeah. don't think. Uh, I, I think this could be a close game. I wouldn't be surprised if Bologna get something there. Though. Yeah, I watched Lecce. They cost me big time when they drew on a Friday night against Lazio. They drew two two, but they deserved the point, and they got a result the following week. Of the two teams, I just like what I've seen from Lecce. Bologna at home have been decent away from home, Steve. Haven't really sold me, not that I've watched them a lot, but if I had to go for two teams or one of the two teams, I would go for Lecce. And last but not least, Udinese, great home record until Lazio beat them at home against a Juventus team that's in all sorts of turmoil. How do you see it going, Steve? Well, the only thing is, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I feel for Juventus in as much as they had the 15 points deducted, then given back, and then all of a sudden they get another 10 points deducted. Yeah. So they, you know, they've been up and down. You know, they find themselves in seventh spot. You know, they could get themselves up into Europa spot if uh, the teams above them slip up. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you added those 10 points back, you know, they'd be in a Champions League spot. So, yeah. you know, they're capable of winning, but they've lost their last two. And uh, you just don't know psychologically what you know this effect has had on them. Uh, I, as you say, Udinese have got a decent home record, and I think it's going to be a tough, tough game. But I, I think Juventus, uh, you know, this is a this is their last this chance of it. getting you yeah. know Europa football. I think they'll have a go, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do get a result. Yeah, just to let everybody know, uh, Juventus are on 59 points, Roma 60, a point ahead of them, obviously, and Atalanta 61. So uh, if they don't win, they're gone. But if they do get a result, it should be very interesting. Steve, pressure time again. I need your best bet and value bet, please. Well, I'm going to go for my best bet, and I, I think you said it earlier. I can't believe they're not odds on, and that's Real Madrid. Yeah, uh, you know, at home against a team well below them, I, I think that uh, they should start as favourites. And my value bet, I'm going to go for Real Betis. <laughs> you know, I think that um, they've had a, they've had a great season in the Champions League spot, and uh, not a Champions League. You know, the, 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 they've had a really good season. And, yeah, you know, finished high in Europa, and I think that uh, they'll be too strong at home. Steve, I don't know if it's great minds <laughs> or whether fools never differ. If Paul was here, he'd obviously say the second, but I'm the same. I just can't believe it. Uh, it was like last week, Spurs were 14 to 10, you know, playing a Leeds team who are a bad team. And, uh, you know, a bad team, I don't care what they need to do, are still a bad team. And uh, the bookmakers go the other way, so hopefully we'll make them pay. Steve? Thanks again, and uh, what we'll do next week is we'll go through the Premiership and Championship of all the English football. I know there's managerial changes do, and also players' awards and so on, and we can discuss, do a review of the English Premiership. Sure. So, sure. Uh, Steve, keep well, and we'll speak over the weekend. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. All the best. Cheers, Badge. Okay. Bye. Our UK correspondent, Stevie Bram. South Africa hotting up in the promotion relegation from the PSL and First Division. We've got the betting. Unfortunately, the betting has only come out this morning. There was only one uh, bookmaker that was odd. And uh, the odds are Cape Town Spurs are 18 to 10. The draw is 2 to 1 and it's 14 to 10 Maritzburg. They've both played Pretorius Kazrik stars. Cape Town Spurs beat them 1-0 away and Maritzburg beat them 2-0 at home. I watched it last night. Kazrik stars, not the best. You know, for me, two to one the draw. You know, they play each other home and away and uh, Cape Town Spurs lost 16 home games, 14 wins, one draw and one defeat. So uh, you just never know. Sean Bartlett's got his guys playing well, but uh, to me, the fear of defeat, especially in this game, two to one the draw would be my selection. On to our exotics for the weekend. And bear in mind, they are Saturday, Sunday. So uh, just please, you know, keep, uh, be, be, very wary, be very wary, apologies. The first one is on Saturday, the Soccer Six, and I'm going Maritzburg United, win and draw against uh, Cape Town Spurs. Off to Turkey, I'm going Konyaspor, win and draw at home against 
Fatih, Kuragumruk. I think Man City, I hate to say it'll be too good for Man United. I'm going the field in the Adama Demispor versus Istanbul Basaksa here, as well as the K Suraspor versus Ankara Guchu. The field in that particular match, and I'm chancing USM Alger to beat Young Africans in the CAF Confederations Cup second leg. Alger are 2 1 down, but at home I think they'll be too good. On to the other Sunday soccer six, which I've got Espanyol to avoid defeat at home against Almeria. I'm going the field in the real mallorca Rayo Vallecano clash. I think Osasuna will be too good at home against Girona. Looking for the upset in the real Valladolid against Catafe match. I don't see Atletico Madrid losing at Villarreal, and I'm going for El Akli to beat White at Casablanca in the first thing of the CAF Champions League, 2-1-6. On to the Soccer 10, which is on Sunday. I'm going Barcelona. I'm throwing the draw in with them to avoid defeat at Celta de Vigo. I'm going for Espanyol, win and draw against Almeria. The field in their Real Mallorca versus Rayo Vallecano game. Two bankers, Osasuna to beat Girona. Real Batiste to beat Valencia. On to our second page, I think Real Madrid will end the season off in style by beating Athletic Bilbao. I'm going Real Sociedad, win and draw at home against Sevilla. The field in the Real Valladolid versus Getafe match. Atletico Madrid to avoid defeat at, at Villarreal. And Al Akli to be too good at home against White at Casablanca, 288. On to the Soccer 13, which is a Saturday Soccer 13. I'm banking Man City to beat Man United. Nor copping to be too good for Bromma Pochkana. RB Leipzig, the German Cup final, win and draw against Eintracht Frankfurt. Signing with Rennes to avoid defeat at Stade Brest. I think Monaco will be too good at home against Toulouse. And two Spanish Segunda playoff games. I'm going Levante to avoid defeat at, Alba, at Albacete. And Deportivo Alaves, win and draw at Arbar. Onto the second page, I'm going Palmer, win and draw at home against Cagliari. Hammerby to be too good for Stockholm Internationale. Vaselunds to be too good at home against Mutala. I'm going for Alafors, win and draw at Ariana. At Wittesburg against Norby, win and draw the home team. And Barcelona women to be too good for Wolfsburg in the Women's Champions League final, 256. On to our budgies bets for the weekend. Very limited with what we can select, but we start off in Spain. I'm going Osasuna to beat Girona, Real Batiste to beat Valencia, and Real Madrid to beat Athletic Bilbao, 2,200 to 200. On to my team goals only. I'm going Espanyol, Getafe, Real Batiste, and Real Madrid, all to score over one and a half goals, 4,700 to 200. On to Italy. I'm going Sassuolo to beat Fiorentina on Friday, AC Milan to beat Hellas Verona, and over two and a half goals in the Empoli Lazio and Udinese Juventus games, 2,700 to 200. The Swedish league will take over soon, so we've got to take a bet. I'm going Leaders Alfsborg to beat Jur Gardens, Sirius to beat IFK Bonamo, and over two and a half goals in the IFK Gothenburgum Jalbi, and Nor Copping Bromwich Pochkana fixture. 2,900 to 200. Brazil, another league which has just taken, has just started, so a, a quadrant it is. I'm going Fortaleza to beat Bahia, Santos to beat Internacionale, Goaz to beat Cuiaba, and both teams to score in the Rio Derby between Vasco da Gama and Flamengo. 2,900 to 200. And our Collis King, six or weeks, Nixa, apology. I'm going Real Batiste to beat Valencia. Real Madrid to beat Athletic Bilbao, AC Milan to beat Hellas Verona, Sirius to beat IFK Bonamo, Malmo to beat Degafors, and Fortaleza in Brazil to be too good at home against Bahia. Great odds, 8,600 to 200. Thank you for watching our on-site SA soccer show, and please remember, take care.